library and how to use the database. You'll be using databases throughout your college career. Um, some professors will limit you to certain databases for your research. And the reason for that is that databases are where you find scholarly journal articles, experts writing to other experts. But it's also a play, good place to find reliable information because they vet whatever sources they have. If they're not legit or some crazy publication by a, you know, a nutcase, they're not going to be in the database. So that helps you get quality sources. So go to Canvas and enter my classroom. And I don't know, this may be on the right side or on the bottom of your page, but click the library. And here we are. Okay. Um, it has information about the physical library and different resources for you. Since most of you are remote learners and don't have access to the library, we're going to, of course, use online resources. And I'm going to choose by subject because we don't know what the title of the perfect source is yet. So, online. Okay. The first thing you have to do is choose the correct database. If you choose a wrong database, you'll end up uh, not being able to get any results. Be and when kids or adult students come to me and say, Mrs. Smith, I've been searching through the database and I can only find one source. Usually it's one of two things that are causing them problems. One is the database. They've chosen the wrong database and that's why nothing's showing up. The other is a search term, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and just choose education. I want to be educated, but I wanted to educate people about opossums. So now, opossums, and I search. Very slowly I search. Oh, for the love of Mary. Oh, there it is. Okay, I come up with nine responses. And I'm looking into them and seeing what they are. Okay, academic journal article. That's experts writing to other experts. So that would be good for college paper. Um, some popular sources might work too. Uh, Boy, that doesn't seem like it's related to my subject. It's like a bunch of learning and teacher stuff. Well, that's because I chose the wrong database, and that's why I ended up with only uh, nine sources, and some of them are just like pictures. So you could either go up here and fix your databases, or we could go back to this original page Let's just start over here. I know I over-limited my search. Maybe I just want to go to multidisciplinary databases. Okay. Academic search complete, EBSCO. Well, I don't know what any of these are. Gale, you might know about Gale if you've had it at your high school. Okay, well, I'll just start with academic search complete. But maybe I want popular sources. So let's go through this list where I could really customize my search. Because the only thing worse than having only nine sources is having 9,000 sources. Because you can't go through that many. So academic search complete. I know that scholarly journal articles. There might be some science on possums. Going down. Business source complete. No, this isn't really about business. I know it's not for teachers, which is Eric. And if you're not sure, Click on the um, little bubble there, and it tells you, so the Education Research Information Center, and it's for teachers or people who are going to become teachers. Hmm, so I don't want that. Green file. Human impact on the environment. That might have something to do with possums, actually. Come down here, Mass Ultra School Edition. This refers to K-12. through 12. Do not use this. 
it's not appropriate for a college level paper. Master file, yes, that's a good one. Middle search plus, middle school, do not use this. Primary search, primary school, elementary school, do not use that. Newspapers I might go for. I don't think there's going to be anything in the military and government section. So I come up here. This is kind of literature, humanities, topic search. That's a general one. I might try that one. Psychology. I think that ought to get me started. Okay, so I've selected those. Now I'm going to put my term back in there. Opossum. I'm going to come down here and click full text, and this is really important. Well, I'll do it without full text. Let me search. So I've chosen my databases and I'm searching opossum. Could the internet be any slower? Okay, 2,918 sources. That's a lot. That's more than I want to go through. So I think maybe I need to put some limiters on this so I could narrow it down. First thing I'm going to do is type full text or hit full text here. This is really really important. If you do if you don't hit full text, it'll pull up every article it can find whether it has it or not. Okay? So it might pull up 2000 of them and see we've already narrowed it down. But a lot of those you would only be able to get to an abstract. The abstract is nothing more than a summary. It's not, it's, you could look at it and see if it's something that interests you, but you cannot get the full text and you can't quote an abstract. So why have things in your search list that you're never going to be able to get? It's just a recipe for disappointment. So I'm going to always click the full text. I might also try to get a little more recent information. I think I don't want, whoops, yeah, about there. Okay, I've cut it down a little bit again. Okay. I want to say I want it to be opossums and pets. Let's see what that does. Okay, now I'm on uh, out of 66. So I think this might be kind of where I want to look around for a while because I'm talking about possum sanctuaries and people rescuing possums so this might be a good one. What I want you to notice is these little icons on the side. It tells you what kind of source it is. Lots of newspapers, uh, a periodical would be a magazine or anything that comes out every once in a while. I think technically newspapers are also periodicals. Academic journal article, that's experts writing to other experts. This is considered a scholarly source. Um, down here in references, you probably, that's an okay place to look something up, but it's not enough in-depth information that's going to interest uh, you and you can't really use it. So I'm going to go ahead and creatures in my garden while I sleep. Maestro the opossum died this morning? No, I've got to have this. So I pull this up and it gives me the publication information, the uh, digital identification number, and we'll talk more about that. So here I have it. There's no opossum. Uh, no abstract on this article, probably because it's short. Okay, it's so short they couldn't summarize it. If I don't feel like reading, I could listen. Maestro the Opossum died this morning. If you That's think. Orgle. Shh, weirdo. If you think it would help you to hear them read to you and you could stand the robot voice, awesome. Um. So I want to use this. I, it's the greatest source I've ever found. There's a couple things I could do. I could save it. I can create a note and bookmark it. But here's the best thing of all. I could cite it.
and it has several different formats, you know, because different disciplines use different formats. But I would want MLA, and it shows how to cite it right here. And I believe you need to download it if you don't download it, it doesn't do the formatting right or it turns it blue. Or you could just copy and paste it and then re-type um, it and delete this. And yeah, the new MLA is using lots of URLs, so that, that is different. This saves you going to your handbook or to Alperdu or e even EasyBib. This is much easier and it's correct. So that's probably the big um, thing that you should use databases for. Um, I'm going to have to figure out why what on my computer is not allowing me to download this because usually there's a download um, key. But this is just a short intro to the database. And if you have problems, let me know.